it's Gabrielle, and this video is a sample from StudyClicks Boost, our new rapid revision tool. Go to studyclicks.ie forward slash boost to find out more. Now we will focus on the Kingdom Protista in a bit more detail, and we will take a closer look at Amoeba as our model organism from this kingdom. The Kingdom Protista contains a wide variety of organisms from large algae such as seaweeds to single-celled organisms like Amoeba and Paramecium. Protists are found almost anywhere that water is present. The main features of this kingdom, they are eukaryotic, meaning they have a membrane enclosed or true nucleus. Some protists feed by taking in organic substances. They absorb these nutrients through their cell membranes. Other protists, like algae, can produce their own food by carrying out photosynthesis. Now let's take a look at amoeba as our model organism for the kingdom protista. Amoeba consists of a single cell, and amoeba are consumers. They feed on small plants, animals, and bacteria. Amoeba lives in freshwater ponds and is usually found on or in the mud at the bottom of the pond. So onto the structure of amoeba now. As eukaryotes, amoeba has a true nucleus. The cell membrane is semi-permeable, as you'd expect, and it will also have visible food vacuoles and contractile vacuoles. The cytoplasm in amoeba is split up into the endoplasm and the ectoplasm. The endoplasm is on the inside. It can appear grainy due to the presence of organelles like food vacuoles and also waste materials. The ectoplasm is on the outside of the cytoplasm. This means that it is closest to the cell membrane. It is soft in places to allow for the development of pseudopodia or false feet for movement. So now let's take a look at the development of a pseudopod or a false foot. Pseudopods are referred to as false feet as they are produced at any point on the body of the amoeba but they have no fixed position. Pseudopodia extend in the direction that amoeba wishes to move. Pseudopods develop when the ectoplasm softens and moves forward and then the endoplasm moves in to replace it. Amoeba uses pseudopodia to surround and engulf its prey. Amoeba then feeds by surrounding its prey with pseudopodia and secreting digestive enzymes into the vacuole that is created. Food can then be stored within this vacuole, so it is called a food vacuole. Now let's look at the contractile vacuole as a means of osmoregulation. Amoeba cytoplasm is far more concentrated than the surrounding fresh water that it lives in. As a result, water constantly rushes into the cell by osmosis. If amoeba did nothing about this, water would continue to enter the cell until the cell membrane would eventually burst and the organism would die. In order to deal with this constant uptake of water, amoeba forms an organelle called a contractile vacuole. Excess water enters this contractile vacuole. The contractile vacuole swells with water and moves to the edge of the cell, where it eventually bursts and expels the water, and the cycle is then repeated. The contractile vacuole is said to be responsible for osmoregulation, or maintaining water balance in the organism. Without it, the amoeba would expand and burst. So here's what you usually need to be able to do. Describe the main features of the Kingdom Protista. Be familiar with the structure of amoeba as a model organism from Kingdom Protista. Be able to describe how amoeba uses pseudopodia for movement, and describe how amoeba uses contractile vacuoles for osmoregulation.